In this video, I'll explain some of the design considerations regarding joining multiple sections of the arm and wing and give examples. Each of these examples use a high wing design with the wing attached by tape, glue, or rubber bands with or without struts, although a low wing or mid wing is certainly possible. When joining the wings together, they're the leading edges. There are several forces to consider. I'm sure there are real engineering terms for these, but I will call them the flapping force, which is the wings rel moving up and down relative to one another, the torsional force, which is the twisting of the wings relative to one another, and what I'll call a scissoring force, which is the front to back movement, which is especially prevalent in twin motor engines where the motor is mounted on the wing. On light models, you can get by with just installing your spar mating the wings together and then securely taping and or gluing all the way around the wing to keep them joined together. Remember if you're using the tip insert joining method here do not trust this as the transition between the two wings. You must have a solid piece of spar spanning that gap to provide adequate strength or and or join the uh, spar to a strut that extends from the bottom of the wing to the fuselage of the plane. On heavier models where you need to separate the wings to allow the fuselage to exist in between, um, the wing will be strong in the so-called flap force and somewhat strong in the scissor but obviously abysmal at the torsion force, so that a lot needs to be done to keep these wings from torquing relative to one another, and especially if you use a multi-engine. Now I've got the center wing joiner section here, the two wings overlapping. I'd recommend at least an inch to provide ample gluing surface, and you've probably noticed by now I'm not a big fan of using huge amounts of glue, but this is an instance where I would be liberal with the glue. This part needs to be strong. This is the depapered top surface of the center wings section that's the joiner and folds over and what I would typically do is put a couple of rare earth magnets here and here to hold that down. Now this joined wing can be rubber banded onto your airplane or securely glued along the bottom. You could actually run some uh, structural members up through this plate to join onto the spar which at this point is actually just free floating and potentially even removable although I wouldn't recommend it. Um, but it's impossible for me to really anticipate the design of your plane and the best way to join that on. But this is intended to keep these two wings in perfect alignment relative to one another and the in this scissoring, the torsional, and the flapping uh, forces when applied in flight. The space in between the wings and within the center wing joiner section makes a convenient place to allow uh, wire junctions to happen. Wise, uh, you can sometimes fit a gyro under there, uh, V-tail mixers for mixing in the throttle and rudder channel, and you can just close this right over the top of it. Um, if you need a really additional rigidity in this, particularly for the torsion force, you can take another piece of foam board and double up that center section like that, gluing underneath along the edges and everywhere you think needed. Depending on your space requirements, you can uh, reinforce this as much as needed. And under this wing center section is the rat's nest of wires, which are the servo wires, uh, the V-tail mixer that I use to mix the throttle and rudder channels together. I've got a big voltage smoothing capacitor for the power supply that comes from the um, receiver power channel, and that just helps to smooth out the power supply. These are a Spectrum cells, a version of these. I've got the flap and aileron servo wires coming from the rear channel of the arm and wing. You can see here the wings are joined with the uh, arrowhead tip inserts screwed together as described. And these sp main spars pass through an aluminum brace that I've made here and on this side. And I've put a secondary spar at the leading edge, which is just a single arrow shaft which uh, holds the leading edges parallel. This turned out to be an effective but pretty heavy arrangement. I'm not sure I would recommend replicating it. In this design, the wires still come from the wing 
as with the Super Otter, but instead of clustering it all right here, I've created a space beneath the upper deck of the fuselage that I can put all the electronics down in there. This left the receiver up and out through this hole in the top of the uh, wing center section just to keep it clear from interference from this cluster of wires. The spar and wing joiner isn't actually attached to the fuselage at this point. It simply passes out of one wing, across the center section, and into the other. I've marked the center of it so on assembly of the plane I can just ensure that I keep the aero shaft with equal components in the left hand wing spar and the right hand wing spar. This whole assembly that you see here, the wing midsection, is comprised of a piece of Dollar Tree foam board that is attached to the fuselage at this point only by two-sided foam tape, a 3 a mounting tape. So for this plane I'm going to use two carbon aero shafts joined in the center here. So extending across the transition of the left and center wing and extending across the transition of the right and center wing here. I'm likely to add a, a third uh, center spar spanning just the center wing depending on how much weight ends up in this um, equipment pod 